What's up, everybody? Welcome to Joyrides. I'm Josh Nosco, and this is my 2019 Toyota Corolla hatchback. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at my latest mod, my first real performance mod, this intake from 2J Racing. We're gonna take a look at how I installed this beautiful intake and some of the mistakes that I made in that process so that if you decide to pick up one of these for yourself, you don't make the same mistakes I did. And I made some mistakes, y'all. Now, a disclaimer, I'm not an expert. This is technically my first cold air intake that I've ever installed on a vehicle I own. So this is just my experience. Take it for what you will. Anyways. The kit from 2J comes with all of the necessary hardware that you would need. It's got the silicone joiner. It has clamps and bolts and it has the k and air filter. Since I live in the Pacific Northwest, I did opt to get the mesh covering for the air filter since it rains and gets muddy and all of that Pacific Northwest goodness. Some of the tools that you'll need for this install is a flathead screwdriver, a plastic pry bar, a socket set with a few different sizes and preferably an extender so that you can more easily get into the hard to reach places and some silicone lubricant and a Q-tip. More on that later. So before the intake arrived, I decided that I was going to order an extra shroud from the radiator support. The reason why is because it's a cold air intake. The piping has to get to where the cold air is, which is behind the grill, which the radiator shroud covers. So you have to cut into it. And I decided, that I wanted to be able to take the car back to stock if I decided to sell it or trade it in or for whatever reason, I wanted to go back to the original intake. So this is the plastic shroud that goes on top of the radiator support. I decided to order one now because now is the time that Toyota is definitely gonna have them in stock instead of a few years from now if they've moved on to a different model and this is no longer the current spec it was about 200 dollars maybe 220 after tax and stuff like that but in my opinion for me that was worth it in order to have the ability to go back to stock if i wanted to i did have to order the engine oil sticker this uh don't handshake the fan uh that came on it i did order another one just because i wasn't sure but this does come on it it was great. There is a template file from 2J Racing, or at least they say a template file. And in my opinion, it's not really a template file as much as it is just rough reference. We did have to cut off a little bit more than I had planned on. Initially, I just wanted to cut a hole, as you can see, but I didn't take into account that on the bottom side, there are all of these fins that also needed to come out. So we had to chop down in these sections and take them out. Uh, a little bit more cutting than I thought there would be. I had tried to do a little notch cut around where the intake pipe was going to mount to the car, but ultimately I just decided to straight hack this piece off right here. And we went straight to the edge. So after I took the radiator support shroud off, I had to get this piece off. This is the beginning of the intake. It pulls cold air in here and sends it along through some filtration out to the air box, which is this. First, you need to take a couple of components off of the intake itself. You use the pry bar and there's a cluster of wires that you have to just kind of pull out gently, but firmly. And then here is where your MAF sensor or your mass airflow sensor 
is installed. This is something that I did wrong. As you can see, I just unscrewed it and just kind of pulled the sensor out before I disconnected the wire. That was wrong. Before you take the MAF out, disconnect that wire. And then when you unscrew the MAF, it'll just come straight out. I kind of went out at a bit of an angle because of the wire. So the other mistake that I had made with the MAF was I tried installing the, ma the MAF on the new intake when the intake was on the car. I just tried to stick it back up in there and bolt it or screw it in from underneath with the Allen key. And I was like, great, it's on, it's, it's not wiggling. But if you'll notice in the video, there's a little bit of a gap which means that it wasn't seated correctly. That could have been what led to my MAF sensor breaking. I ended up getting a check engine light that the engine was running a little lean and I took it into Toyota and they were like, yeah, your MAF is broken. You need to order a new one. That was about $180. So don't make that mistake. One of the things that I did notice with my, this was my original MAF, is that the metal on the intake, and it could have been because I put it in a little wonky at an angle, it did shred the O-ring a little bit, which could have caused a leak, and therefore everything to run lean because it's just sucking in more air through that little hole. How I got around that was when I ordered my new MAF, which arrived a couple of days after I ordered it, I took a Q-tip, and a tiny, tiny amount of silicone lubricant and went around the edge and I pulled the pipe off, turned it upside down and installed the MAF. And as soon as I did that, it just slid right in and screwed down perfectly. Nothing was too tight. Nothing had like too much resistance when I was screwing it in. So that's how I should have done it. It's not how I did it initially. And subsequently I had to buy a $185, $180, $185 math sensor replacement. So that stung a bit. So don't do that. Anyways. After you get your math sensor removed properly and swapped over properly, there's this cluster of wires and cables right here that's attached to a bracket. I couldn't personally figure out how to get just the bracket off so that I could drill the required hole outside of the engine bay. I ended up blocking off the intake port and we used a series of drill bits till we got it to the size of the bolt that 2J provided to attach it directly to the intake. That's, that's sturdy. After we drilled the hole, we did use a little bit of black paint so that nothing ends up rusting or corroding over time because Pacific Northwest. Since this is a cold air intake, as I said earlier, the filter and the piping does have to get behind the grill. 
I test fit the filter on first, hoping that I would just be able to kind of like wiggle it in and get it into place. But you have to kind of like in a little side thing, wedge it in so that you can get the filter in and then you put the pipe on and then you can connect the filter to the end of the intake pipe. You gotta reach your hand in underneath and then you gotta screw it in and hold it in place. And it's just, you know, that's cold air intakes for you. After I had my issues with the math and after some back and forth over Instagram messaging with 2J Racing, they took a look at their O-ring in their demo car and they saw that the O-ring was shredded on that. They found a $2 replacement O-ring, which after our conversation, they said they're gonna be including in their kits that go out from here forward. And they were gonna suggest in their how-to video to use a little bit of silicone lubricant around the O-ring to keep it from shredding when you install it. Again, you don't need that much. You just need a little bit so that you don't have the rubber on metal because anytime rubber is on metal, the metal wins. That's just how physics work. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't have any complaints with this intake at all with the design. I think it is very, very well made. The math was mostly my fault and things that I should have thought about beforehand. I should have thought, hey, metal on rubber let's probably give it a tiny amount of lubrication so that it doesn't shred and maybe i should have thought hey let's not try and put that in when it's in the car let's do that first and mistakes were made but i do think it is a very very good intake there was a short period of time after i cleared all of the codes that the engine when i was Driving was fine. No no issues with revving or anything like that. It, this revs. When I would come to a stop and the engine was idling, there was a little bit of fluctuation in the idle and it would hit around 500 or just under 500 RPMs, which caused the engine to shake. But after a couple of days of that, which again, this could have been tied to my mistake with the math and the check engine light and all that. The engine management system adapted for the new air fuel ratio, Toyota engine management systems. They figure that out on their own. You can't flash them or tune them or anything like that. They just, oh, there's more air. Let's do a little more fuel up until, you know, you hit your limits. But 2J Racing has been pretty great to work with. Anytime I had issues, I just messaged them on Instagram and they were pretty quick to respond. I sent pictures and they were like, yep, nope, that's, yep, nope, mm -mm. Needed to get a new math. I have more of their parts on order arriving in the next week. I have the headers, the mid pipe, and their exhaust. And we're gonna make a video about that. So look forward to that. And speaking of additional mods, I did order a set of wheels and tires from Discount Tire, which I am extremely excited about. Cannot wait to get them on the car. I'm gonna say what they are. I'm gonna tell you just yet, so you're gonna have to wait. But if you can't wait for the video, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Nurskers and Joyrides Media at Joyrides Media on Instagram and Twitter as well probably won't be able to keep myself from posting pictures and video when I get them on. Be sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know each and every time we post a new video. And while you're down there, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this 2J Racing intake and how beautiful it is and the sweet, sweet induction noises. So many mods coming in the future. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Now go for a joyride.